This is the Peugeot Rifter, and believe it or not, I think this is one of the best new cars launched this year. Okay, so it's not exactly what you'd call sporty, and you might not even think it looks all that cool, because essentially what you're looking at here is a van with windows. And that's despite Peugeot's reasonably successful efforts to jazz it up with some stylish bits of cladding, alloy wheels, and this striking front grille. So as far as these caravan type things go, it's actually not the worst. It's just quite difficult in general to make this sort of silhouette look glam. Unless, of course, you stick a canoe on top like they do in the press images. But even if you don't have a canoe, this is a car so overtly functional that it does a full 360 and becomes cool again by not trying to be cool at all. It's hip to be square. One slight problem with the boot is the quite large clearance you need to open it fully, which is why this little hatch comes in very handy if you just need to drop some shopping in. When you do get the chance to open it fully, it's absolutely enormous inside and comes with some clever tricks like hooks and tether points, an adjustable parcel shelf and a 12 volt charging socket. Now you might not be keen on the van-like shape, but nobody is going to complain about the van-like space. This is the 5 seat version, which gets three full-size individual seats in the back. Now being a van, headroom was never going to be an issue and legroom is quite generous too. You've also got some lap trays for the kids, a USB charging port, and one massive strong point for the Rifter is these three sets of individual Isofix anchors, meaning that you can fit three car seat age kids in a row and still have space for their stuff in the boot. These sliding doors are also very handy and help prevent dings in the car park. And there's plenty more storage in the front too. In fact, I don't think I've even found all the different storage areas yet. And there really is somewhere to put everything in here. Aside from the high driving position, it's not that vanish in the front either, and that's mainly due to the large amount of technology on display. And all models come with the Peugeot iCockpit as standard, which includes this 8-inch touchscreen multimedia display, complete with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a head-up instrument cluster, and this tiny, sporty Peugeot steering wheel. The starting price for the entry-level active model is €23,500 for the 5-seat model or €24,500 for the 7-seat model. And other standard features include lane keep assist, emergency braking and a speed limiter, so it is very well equipped from the ground up. But you can upgrade to the Allure model for 16-inch alloy wheels, rear parking sensors, automatic lights and wipers and a leather-covered steering wheel or once again to this GT line model, which adds a reversing camera, dual zone climate control, a privacy glass, some nice GT line styling upgrades, 17 inch alloy wheels, and that glass hatch opening at the back. Plus even more safety features, including traffic sign recognition and driver alert warning. Now some of that you could probably live without, but for the glass hatch opening and the reversing camera alone, I would strongly consider going for this one because it still starts at under 30,000 euros. On the road, it's not fun in any way, shape or form just to get that out of the way and I don't think that by looking at it you would have had any reason to think that it was. It feels a bit like a small van, which shouldn't be surprising either, but a very, very comfortable, well-equipped small van. And there is always going to be sacrifices to be made for having this much space and spec for such good value. And it's not necessarily unpleasant, it's just different, especially if you're coming from a smaller vehicle. But it is surprisingly easy to drive. And I know it might look massive, but it is very easy to maneuver. And this nice high driving position does give you a very commanding view of the road ahead. This one is the 1.5 liter HDI diesel with 130 brake horsepower. It feels reasonably powerful and offers impressively good fuel economy. This one is the six speed manual, which has a nice smooth throw and offers a very straightforward driving experience. There's lots of low down pulling power and a reasonably quick takeoff. That stylish SUV might look more attractive now, but the fact of the matter is the Rifter is twice the car for a fraction of the price, which makes it the smart choice, even if it's not necessarily the cool one. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Would you consider this over a Skoda Kodiak 
or a Peugeot 5008 or a Hyundai Santa Fe. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Join us back here next week where we will be reviewing another spacious seven seat option.